Chapter 1. Whatever I am we are aware, we experience reality, consciously, we interact with reality. And reality, reacts to us. And interacts with us. Seasons touch us. Planets move us. The oceans bath us. The moon and lights us. And everything around us, either brings us aggravation, peace, or enjoyment. We are not human, alone. As interacting with human culture or society alone. We are immeasurably part of everything. We are born from the fabric of the universe. Made from the smallest bits of reality. The universe is a part of us. Of our person. Of our body. Our existence is crafted from the bowels of the existence itself. From its own components. They have been sewn together and turned into the bodies we inhabit. But, we and our awareness are a mystery. Inside this cage, all are trapped stuck in this time, in this place. Unable to transition space at will. Unable to do, be, and see as we will. Unable to project ourselves to the corners of the world, by power of will. Everything around us is mechanical. All of it. Why? Why stuck? Why limited? Why are we? Why do we exist? Is there a reason? These are reasonable queries. But no one can answer me. At least not without arguing with someone else about their take on the matter. Why has the truth abandoned us? Man without truth, is like a cage animal, pitted against another cage animal. Viciously, they will fight each other. Neither, improving the situation. Ignorance, is inherent. The ability to reason, deduce, and problem solve, is also inherent. Questions and answers. I don't believe that any question exists without an answer. The answer may not immediately be comprehended, but it does exist. I believe that all questions and all answers are equal to the same product. That product being the equivalent. I believe that reality, in whole, is home to all existence, and therefore, is home to all fact. That makes all fact, reality, and states that unknowns, are facts not yet realized by human consciousness, but otherwise, still fact. Missing pieces, to seek what is and divide it from what is not, is a part of being human. It's a conscious ramification, an instinct forced on us by the mystery of our being born without the answers. I didn't ask to be here, I was born into a world I did not create, subject to laws existent in the universe before my own existence began. I was given no choice for parents or siblings. I had no part in the genetic construction of my own body. Crippled or deformed, I had no choice. To what part of the world I would be born, and the leaders therein, I had no choice. Nor had I the choice for what I would be taught by those here on the earth before me. That my infant and adolescent self would be dependent for survival on those mentally and physically matured to the world, that had I no choice in. At no time, over any detail concerning my birth, did I have voice. I did not ask to be here. Yet, here, is where I am. Abandoned at birth to realize myself, and make manifest, my internal being, into this external world, is the challenge that being born stranded me with. Till death, we're dying. Every breath we take is a step toward death. We can't help it. We can't stop it. Not breathing, isn't an option, but a waste of precious time. It forces my recognition and my respect. It demands a certain level of attention, compelling me to explore the questions of self. Who am I? And what did I believe? And is what I believe, true? I have one life. A set number of breaths. And only one chance to be, and do whatever it is I'll be or do. Life, lifelong, I have a certain but unknown frame of time to which I will be. That course, its navigation and destination are mine to answer. Its longevity, being however long I shall exist, is mine to travel, but not fully mine to decide. That includes all circumstance, and situation, and stimulus that make contact with my presence, not just my own self-induced response and interaction. What that means, is that it will always be me, and my life, and my decisions, and my person, and my well-being. The Dark Death To embrace ignorance is to die a dark death, giving self to nothing. I don't want to give my life and my soul to the dark of ignorance. I want to know, moment last. That what I have spent my life believing to be true, is true, not a lie, lifelong embraced. 
Who am I? Each person is born an individual, having the power of free will. With it, comes profound obligation to being self-consciously aware of our own beliefs and opinions, and the consequence to our choices and actions. To ignore the power and responsibility of free will, is itself, a choice, chosen, and not an only human, handicap. We are human. We are power. We are choice. We are the one possible future, answer of self, and strength of soul, that will ever exist to us. Self is a variable equation, who we are, is an open question, that because of choice, must be closed. Option, mandate direction, direction mandates selection, selection mandates choice, which leaves no other choice, but to choose. An intimate process, self-declaration is a form of personal interrogation, in which we communicate with our self-conscious reason and evaluate the surrounding world, and then make appropriate decisions based on our findings, and how they relate to our own well-being. Self, is a riddle of choice, question meets answer, go left or go right. Morally, psychologically, physically, every time we have to choose, we ask ourselves, who am I? And every time, we've chosen, we've answered, what am I? My mind is superficial, the go between will and action. My body is unimportant, does what I say, and isn't me. So I, must be neither mind nor body. And yet, I control both mind and body. Making me, some kind of living control. Some kind of living power. If there is any such thing as soul, then I must be that very thing. The soul. I am more than a name, what power has a name? It's a label for others to address and identify us. It's what they say when they talk about us. It's a tag, our designation from birth. We were like collars, like stamped property. It does nothing more. It accomplishes nothing more. Cannot speak for us, and say, this is who I am, or this is what I believe. It fails to have life of its own. I, who I am, is alive. I am living. I have thoughts and dreams and emotions. I am a person. I am a soul. I am more than a name. I am more than animal. Mankind shares all the basic senses of awareness that our cousins in the animal kingdom have. Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, memory of experience, and emotional self-consciousness. But it is our intellectual and spiritual awareness that set us apart. As a species, we have the power of artistic creativity, mathematics deduction, the ability to choose principle over will and instinct, to reason right from wrong, comprehend invisible factors express any number of feeling or emotion through organized communication contemplate dimension apply science assign classification on basis of fact principle characteristic and property as opposed to general experience and revere the pure holiness of life its beginning and sustaining all life is special but human life is blessed and should be profoundly respected what makes a man a man if you take everything away from a man his friends, his family, his home, you will be left with the one thing in life that makes him who he is. His soul. In death, all else will remain, surrendered back to the world he borrowed them from. Man is the substance of choice. The manifestation of will and reserve. Painted choices, there is a wonderful thing about paint, applied to a canvas it becomes a moving reality. Touching places of a person that no hand can go, and no eye can see it but without an artist, it can do nothing. Each day is like a blank canvas, pure and pristine, and shouldn't be taken for granted. No man has yet taken her innocence or wet her being. Choice, acting like a paintbrush, creates every property of the reality we paint for ourselves. The picture of yesterday was painted by the choices of yesterday. Today's picture has been painted by the choices we've yet to paint with. While yesterday's painting does echo its reality to us today, the colors and lines we paint today with, have their own strokes. We can reflect on yesterday's painting, see the wrong and right, and paint today educated by the choices of yesterday. It's our power as artists, to paint our own world. But the canvas, is the person of ourself. With our heart, turned in on itself, we reflect outward, what we dare call self. Heart, our heart is confined. Trapped in the world of its own substance. It resides in isolation, lonely, contrast, and definitively home. 
to the world that surrounds it, it is invisible, showing only glimpses of its actual person. An incomplete and limited picture. It cannot come in contact with anyone or anything outside its sphere of being. It has one possession, and one ally, itself, only. Who it is. Its love, its hate, its integrity, its anger. And the sad knowledge that no one can see it. No one can hear it. And no one can feel its true person. Separated entirely, but very much a living being, our heart lives its entire life alone, in a realm of reality by itself, removed from the world, and absent of physical senses. It is forced to acknowledge self, to define, explore, and realize who it is. The only true power it has. Beliefs, beliefs are meant to limit. They're meant to counter the complexity of being so insignificant when standing alone against the unknown powers of the universe. They're meant to balance self's relationship with the factors that make up this big place called reality. They're meant to help the heart keep beating when the soul says no more, and the mind to trust when the body can't do it. They're meant to bring self to purpose and purpose to self. They're meant to be our companions through life when no one else is there, and our best friend when no one else seems to care. Beliefs too, you can believe based on your senses, but those are limited to self. You can believe based on factors, but those are limited to the difference between what is known, and what is not. But either way, you face limitations, and will still have questions left to ask and answer. I believe, it must be found, and that it is already, if I know it or not. And because it is, it exists, and I exist. And that makes I and the unknown answer, exist. Because, all exist in the same master existence. Together, in the same verse, even if not perceptible. The puzzle, all that we experience. We experience in the solitude of self and being. Though it feels grand and stretched, it is never outside ourself. Questions are the response of our ignorance. We face reality as one who knows nothing and needs to know much. We live in reality, but we are not conscious of its vast contents. Piece by piece, the puzzle takes shape. We begin to know this more and more of reality, gaining answers to our questions. We are not learning the puzzle of reality. It is reality already. And already established. We are learning our place. Growing in opinions, and perceptions. Growing, the world within our person. Conscience, reality, is reality. The straightforward fact. A rock is a rock. A babbling brook, is a babbling brook. A solar system, is a solar system. The field of golden grass is a field of golden grass. Reality is. It has no argument. Man, is straightforward only in death, birth, and form. His conscience, is not a realm of fact. It's a realm of argument. Where the battle of right and wrong takes place. The battle, that is spilled over into the realm of reality, where the world that surrounds man is affected by his own inner turmoil and creatures untold are moved by the force of man's decision and indecision both. Right and wrong, argument, is the only determining factor in the structured settlement of the reality that is in man's mind. It cannot be solved by ration or reason alone. Elements of argument themselves, it must contend with itself, has no choice is without cost, and each bears a cross, unloosing the counsel of man's person, who will weigh in, on every decision, the mind, the heart, and the soul, each man is required by his conscience, to resolve right from wrong, to erect a parameter of separation, and to identify the unknowns as either or, to the best of his conscious ability. The conscience, is an aspect of consciousness, that is aware of the effects and outcomes of actions upon self, others, and reality, as potentially harmful or beneficial. It recognizes that self is able to purpose harm, intend benefit, and slash or be self-concerned instead. Conscience, is a graphic file system of category and index, that evaluates everything, all the time, like an antivirus program, to the point of keeping self from an ignorance of his or her actions. Conscience, allows mankind to have a purpose, a self-definable purpose, that he wasn't born with. We are required. We are required, not by self, but by requirement. It exceeds us. 
surrounding us in every direction. With its origin, not in the person of man. We are required to act. Action is required. Any time choice or temptation are presented to us. Action is our response. Often, the reflection of dominate natures. But not all responses are the expressions of private will or nature. We are required to choose. We can choose. We are not obligated to be selfish. We can elect. We can cause. We can sacrifice. By conscious design, we can put the welfare of others before ourselves. We can set into motion, repercussion, intention, and circumstance that benefit others. And cause, for sake of the cause. We are required to be. To be, cause, is, caused, by, being the essence of the motion, that is our will, and that is willed. We are required to reject. We can choose the correct things of God. Over our own will. We can reject will. We can reject self. We can reject nature. With strength, effective and thorough. To the overthrowing of natural chains. We are required to warn. Man, is a creature of opposition and war, with himself. And able to be one person at any one time. Self, or self-successor. He cannot exceed the moment. And he cannot escape the responsibility of his expression and person. To the defining, of, who he is, in the essence of the moment. As it is required of him to be. Principle, is his dwelling place. Fear, is his dwelling place. Belief, is his dwelling place. Responsibility, is his dwelling place. And he must choose, where he will dwell. Even, if it is to run from all requirement. In his indecision and in his fear. We are not excused, we cannot impede requirement. It remains. And it continues to require us. Despite our will. Despite our objection. Despite our deception. Despite our various degrees of apathy. Despite our many forms of camouflage. The complex universe of personal reality, the mind, is manifested into consciousness from nothing. Void is rich, and contrast to its essence. It has nothing of substance or inheritance. It is finite. Non-existent if not for its sensitive recognition to an awareness, that will be known forever as self. From its start, self-awareness is defeated. It is overwhelmed. And it is devastated. Human awareness, is a landscape of disaster. Filled with the broken and charred remains of a pre-existent reality. Full-scale battles rage upon its crumbled ghost. Fierce and countless wars, fought in fractions of a second. That pit man's own thoughts and feelings against themselves. Awareness, is a reality. And that reality is unique within man, to the individual. All of humanity is aware. The machine-like quality. If not for personality. As all can be aware, individually. But it is our personal awareness that separates the generic fact of awareness, from private interpretations, intuitions and objectives. There is individual awareness. And there is personal awareness. Individual awareness, it is a technical overlay to our understanding. That differs from personal understanding. Individual awareness is an impersonal observation of what island facts, factors, and all manner of tangible realities, that require nothing of sentiment, judgment, or reflection. It's the view from practical and technical vantage points. Personal reality, it is the truth of a man's conscience, his heart, his soul, his feelings, his life. It is the world within, as he sees it, and not as it is, without him. Man, is not capable of knowing the universe, all within it, and the truth of self. Instead, he is forced to recognize patterns and aspects, note relationships between things, and interpret those notes, and those recognitions and figure out who he and she island it's a mostly straightforward task that merely manages the facts of reality as they've been observed but the challenge is in the essence that inhabits reality reality is not lifeless it's full of life it's not straightforward it's moving the universe that's born anew every second of every day by consequences circumstances and truths consequence is the result of effect an effect is the property of no one. It is as limitless as the sky. Stretching from in to in. With benefit and gain, a possibility. And with harm and destruction, a possibility. 
possibility, is a variable. The free-roaming variable that upsets the scale of static reality and introduces the need of human awareness to alter its perception, changing technical observation into careful consideration. From this meditation and this experience man propagates a mental model of reality, the tree of rules, laws, morals and relationships, representative of observed and anticipated consequences and possibilities. Man is not an element of awareness that is tuned into the expansive existence. He is an isolated consciousness, with only his awareness to reality, alertness to detail, intuition, and deduction to aid his stance. A crutch, that man can shift a portion of his weighted person to reality. Reality is a single fact. In any direction, multiplied or divided, layer within layer within layer. Interacting and reacting with and to the infinity of reality's substance. Reality is a fact. Whole and inhabited. It is an untouchable wall of black mystery. That humanity cannot conceive or understand. Relevant reality. Man is reality. He becomes it. His mind and his person introspectively create an internal montage of existence. That changes to accommodate the changes in reality itself. The mind relates itself to reality, and reality to it where the two are factually indifferent, rendering relevance, and associating preference, prerogative, and value. His person, altering the facts of cold reality to include private personality, instituting the world of personal reality, the only reality that he can perceive, as he experiences it, interprets it, and interacts with it. What surrounds man, is infinite. And what man knows, is equally infinite, nothing. He is as he is born, lost in the endless universe of his own ignorance. Personal reality, is man's only compass, his only truth.